In tonight's in-depth segment, we examine the activism and criticism around legalizing marijuana. Wearing shirts that read, Weed Lives Matter, dozens of pro-marijuana activists gathered in the state capitol rotunda to rally support for a raft of bills relating to legalizing marijuana in Kentucky. Recent surveys show that more than 80% of Kentuckians support marijuana legalization. Louisville Republican Jason Nemus was against the proposition back when he ran in 2016, but says stories he's heard from those who found relief through marijuana while suffering from debilitating ailments changed his mind. And here's the fundamental question that, I'm gonna, that I pose to my friends in the House and in the Senate. What would you do? What would you do if it were your spouse who had cancer treatment and couldn't get out of bed because of pain or vomiting, as Senator Simons testified about? What would you do? What would you do if it were your child who had seizures and her neurologist says, this will help. The studies show it will help. What would you do? Because what we're telling Kentuckians to do is we're saying you must leave your home or you must suffer, or you must be a felon. We are here today to say there is a better way. Can I get an amen? They cut that colon cancer out of me seven years ago. They gave me a bottle of Oxycontin. Go home and take these legal pills, Dan. Maybe you'll get hooked, right? Went home and threw them in the garbage and smoked a joint. You got to remember this when you talk to these legislators. They work for you. you know? 33 states have legalized medical marijuana. On last Monday's edition of KUT's Kentucky Tonight, Renee Shaw discussed medical marijuana with a panel of supporters and objectors. Ed Shimalia, head of the anti-marijuana program called the National Marijuana Initiative, a branch of the High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Program run by the U.S. Office of National Drug Control Policy, says he maintains the asserted medical benefits of weed are not certain and more research is needed. What concerns me as we've seen this happen 33 times in this country is that we have now voters and state legislators trying to circumvent the FDA process in this country. We have a tried and true process. Whether you like it or not, whether it's slow, too slow, too cumbersome, too burdensome, we have a process for determining the efficacy and safety of the products that we consume. I am a 100% for expanding access to research with respect to marijuana. We should be doing that. We should of the 100 plus cannabinoids. We know very little about this drug and herein lies the problem with that. There is more that we do not know about marijuana than we do know, and we're making some assumptions and assertions that aren't backed by peer-reviewed valid science and research. So here. do you uh, favor the reclassification of marijuana to not be a Schedule I drug that puts now, in these restrictions where it can't be researched? I, I say that what we, we need to be doing with this as we get the derivatives, much like we did with the CBD and in, uh -huh. in Epidiolex, that, and that we was need to reschedule the yeah. derivative. We don't need to reschedule the whole plant in order to accomplish that. We can reschedule the derivatives as they come out, and we can utilize the derivatives in a therapeutic value that they are designed to be after they've been put through the FDA scrutiny. That's all we're asking for. Dr. Dinesh Moslem Deust, a pain medicine specialist in Lexington, also appeared on KET's Kentucky Tonight to voice his objections to legalizing medical marijuana as Representative Jason Nemes's House Bill 136 would do. Doctors would recommend marijuana for their patients whom they believe would benefit. The Kentucky Medical Association isn't on board with the idea, as the pain specialist reiterated. Sure, it's fine to put the onus and responsibility on a physician, but the, but the physician body in Kentucky does not want that. The KMA vociferously says, we're not interested in this because we still believe that there is plenty of research to be done before we can prove safety and efficacy. And secondly, uh, we already have certain products that are effective. Uh, I, I recommend CBD to my patients, um, but I also caution them about its use, THC's use, um, and, and the limitations of what science knows. We don't know who's vulnerable to uh, addiction, just as how not everybody who drinks alcohol is gonna become addicted, not everybody who uses marijuana will be addicted. 
However, we don't know the patients that are vulnerable. We don't know the contraindications. We don't know the medication interactions. There's so much that we don't know and has known harm to it that, uh, that we can't make a bl blanket statement that physicians understand this drug enough to be prescribing or recommending it. You can watch the full discussion about medical marijuana from Monday evenings, Kentucky Tonight, at ket.org slash kytonight. There are four bills dealing with cannabis legalization this session, including Nemesis House Bill 136. Republican Senator Dan Symes' Senate Bill 80 would legalize recreational marijuana. Republican Senator Jimmy Hignett's Senate Bill 82 would decriminalize possession of up to an ounce of marijuana for personal use by adults. And Democrat Perry Clark's Senate Bill 83 provides workplace protections for public employees who fail a drug test related to the use of a legal industrial product, such as CBD. Tomorrow, the House Health and Family Services Committee is scheduled to take up a concurrent resolution calling to expedite research on the safety and efficacy of medical marijuana. While there's a lot of talk about marijuana, 